Previously, Karen X. Ching, an award-winning director who has garnered over 500 million views, crafted an adorable and calming origami-themed video. She revealed her use of anime diff in creating an origami world, instantly sparking my interest and prompting me to give it a try as well. Before diving into the workflow, let me show you an origami version of the Kamuzin that I generated. What do you think? Personally, I feel that the origami style is more suitable for creating simple and fresh videos, like what Karen does, especially for daily life scenes. The visual should be minimal, highlighting the main theme, primarily focusing on image-to-image -image generation. However, this time, I chose to run a dancing video, which is quite challenging, but that's okay, hoping to cast a brick to attract a jade and inspire better ideas from all of you. Today, I'll mainly introduce some key points when using IP adapter combined with anime diff, such as parameter selection. I hope you find it helpful. Starting the comfy UI, loading a default text-to-image workflow. In order to achieve the origami effect, my first thought was to fill in a suitable positive prompt, such as an origami girl, and a simple negative prompt like blurry. I selected a size of 512 by 768 for the dancing video, used the conventional DPMPP2M sampling method combined with Keras, clicked run. but the result was not satisfactory. I tried running it several more times, increased the quantity to 4, but still not good. It's completely different from what I envisioned as the origami girl. Since using only prompts isn't ideal, I had to think of other ways. This time, I chose to use IP adapter. This isn't a new technique, many of you may have heard of it. Essentially, you give it a reference image, and it tries to replicate those features in the generated image. Add an Apply IP Adapter node. Connect it to a node that loads the IP Adapter model on the left side. I chose the IP Adapter plus underscore SD15 model, as the custom node author describes it as plus model, very strong. Then connect it to a clip underscore vision node, selecting the default 1.5. Upload a reference image. Here's something to note. Because Clip Vision can only encode square images of size 224 by 224 for any non-square images, to avoid distortion, you need to connect a prepare image for Clip Vision node to process them. Generally, you would choose cropping methods like center, top, pad, etc. I chose center here. Then connect a preview image node. You'll see its actual effect in a moment. Modify the parameters here, give the weight to 0.8, change noise to 0.01, leave other parameters unchanged, and connect the ports on the left and right sides of the model. However, if you've upgraded to the latest version of ComfyWe underscore IP Adapter underscore plus, you can use the IP Adapter Masked Tiles node instead of the Apply IP Adapter node here. It can automatically split the reference image, bypassing the clip vision limitation. But remember to set short underscore side underscore tiles to at least 2 and tile underscore weight to the default 0.6, SDXL can be slightly lower at 0.5. Moving to the sampler side, change the iteration steps to 25. If you've watched many IP adapter tutorials before, you might ask if the CFG should be changed to 6. This is indeed a drawback of IP adapter, because it generates embeddings based on input images and intermediate outputs influencing the diffusion model's generation process and indirectly increasing the prompt weight. However, if we choose to lower CFG, while it can avoid rendering transitions, it weakens the intensity of our prompts. Now there's a more reasonable solution. At a rescale CFG node after the IP adapter process, resetting the CFG to 0.7 times its current value, effectively restoring it to the previous weight setting. Click Run. Go to the generation results. The origami effect is quite good, but overall, it's a bit too close to the reference image for my liking. Lower the weight to 0.4. Try again. And the result this time is more satisfying. Quite close to what I described in the prompt as a girl. Next, let's add the control net process. Here I'm using depth. 
Fill in the path to the image frame folder. Start with a quantity of 1. And set the batch size above to 1 as well. Click Run. Check the result directly. It's not satisfactory. I added a mask to Control Net. Here, let me show you. When I dissected the video earlier, I already used various preprocessors to generate different materials based on each frame image, including line art, depth, pose, and mask corresponding to characters or backgrounds. This way, when making the video, I can easily read and combine them as needed, saving time. Run it again. Better now. I adjust the prompts and various parameters. Run it again. And this time, the effect is even better. I won't demonstrate further fine tuning, as it's essentially a trial and error process. Now, I'm starting to regret, origami images are really hard to generate compared to real people or anime characters. Fortunately, I still managed to generate a few good ones at the end. I picked one as a reference image and am ready to start the video process. Now, I'll add the anime diff loader and context nodes needed for running the video. For these models, choose mm underscore sd underscore v15, use sqrt underscore linear here, and leave other parameters unchanged. Change the batch underscore size of empty latent image to input for consistency across different nodes in the entire process. Similarly, change image underscore load underscore cap in control net to input. Connect them together. Input quantity as 16. Then connect to a video combine node. And choose MP4 format. Click run. And you'll get an origami style dancing video. Because I only ran 16 frames, the movements may not be very pronounced, but the effect is decent. Due to time constraints, I won't adjust or optimize further in this video. Feel free to explore if you're interested. If you don't need to create highly dynamic dancing videos like this, and just want a soothing video similar to Karen's style, my suggestion would be to select a suitable source video, use IP adapter for the origami effect, and use control net depth for image-to-image -image generation. If possible, SDXL would be better. It should be simpler that way. Well, that's it for today's video. See you next time.